series of uh, webinars of the month of July. Today we have a special topic for discussion that is basics of epilepsy surgery. The scenario in India by conservative estimates there are around 10 million people with epilepsy. As you know, this is a subspecialized neurosurgery requiring multi-department support of various departments including neurology, neurophysiology, neurosurgery. To take us through the technical nuances of this Subspecialized field of neurosurgery today, we have with us Professor Takamichi Yamamoto, who is from the Sirai General Hospital, Hamamatsu. On behalf of the Education Committee and the President, Professor Yoko Kato, I welcome you to this online platform. Professor Yamamoto, you may please start your webinar. Okay, thank you, Roger. Uh, yeah, I'm going to talk about uh, basic, uh, basics in epilepsy surgery. So the headline is like this, as, as the followings. I'm going to talk about uh, indications for epilepsy surgery and uh, uh, anatomy and a surgery of a temporal lobe and a placement of uh, intracranial electrodes in a corpse callosotomy. And the last one is the vagus nerve stimulation. And uh, what is, uh, uh, people, people always uh, ask me at uh, what is the uh, indication for epilepsy surgery. And uh, that is the definition of uh, medical refractory epilepsy. And uh, previously we said that the appropriate two drugs for two years, uh, but uh, we don't know appropriate, right? So uh, think about uh, patients with a temporal of epilepsy and uh, uh, the refractory uh, localized uh, epilepsy with the impaired awareness seizures. And if you choose the uh, phenobarbital or clonazepam for these patients, that is not good. So choose the uh, carbamazepine as an old fashioned uh, drug and also the newer drug as a dimetrigine, levetiracetam, lacosamide, or perampano. And these, these drugs should be prescribed for these patients. Um, and now uh, it is shorter and shorter uh, the fall uh, of the period of observation. So now is uh, the failure of to achieve uh, seizure freedom with the two appropriately used anti epilepsy drugs. Uh, this is the same two drugs, but uh, the year is one year and uh, or three times the longest prior seizure free interval. Uh, that means if the patient uh, has been seizure-free for three months, then the uh, patient cannot get uh, uh, seizure freedom for uh, nine months. Then the patient goes to uh, for further evaluation uh, uh, and for epilepsy surgery. And this is also the, uh, the, the important thing uh, in changes in uh, ILA terminology. ILA is an international league against epilepsy. It's the largest uh, uh, Congress worldwide. And, and they uh, uh, sometimes determine the, the new uh, terminology, like, uh, like this uh, semiology. So in 1981, uh, they determined the word as uh, a simple partial seizure as a SPS and a complex partial seizure as a CPS. So we are very accustomed to use these words, but, so, but now it is a change to uh, like this, the SPS changed to uh, focal onset uh, aware seizures, FAS fast, and the CPS changed to focal onset impaired aware seizures, FIAS, the FIAS, and then secondary gen generalization uh, change to focal to bilateral tonic clonic seizures, FBTCS. And then uh, particularly young uh, neurosurgeons uh, are, uh, should know this new terminology and they use these words uh, when, when, uh, when you present to the, uh, uh, at the uh, Congress, uh, this is very important. And uh, this is uh, seizure freedom by the number of anti epileptic drugs. Uh, uh, the horizontal or axis is the number of uh, anti epileptic drugs, and the vertical, vertical line is, uh, is a, per, a possibility of a percentage uh, to, be, uh, to be seizure free. 
And then if you uh, prescribe the, the first one, uh, first anti-epileptic drug, then the patient uh, may become uh, seizure-free up to uh, 50%. But uh, the second one, so maybe 20%. And then the third one is just uh, less than less than ten percent. Then uh, uh, one or two drugs are good for uh, seizure freedom, but uh, uh, more more drugs uh, do not necessarily mean uh, good outcome. <clears throat> and this is a list of uh, pre-surgical evaluations. Uh, I think it's many. Many countries, uh, <clears throat> epileptologists uh, from neurology uh, will do these uh, pre-surgical evaluations. But uh, in my country, uh, I, I'm a neurosurgeon, but uh, I should do both epileptologists, <laughs> as, work as an epileptologist and the neurosurgeons. Uh, and then uh, I always do all, all, the, all these things. And the important thing is uh, the this one, long-term video EEG monitoring. Uh, we say the LTM or BEEG. Uh, this should be done for a week to see uh, habitual seizures uh, and then find the uh, seizure onset onset zone on the and the. Uh, uh, habitual seizure semiology, and uh, we can find uh, we can determine that the candidate uh, should go go to the surgery or not. <clears throat> and this is the phases in epilepsy surgery. Phase one, uh, phase one is uh, uh, less invasive uh, evaluations, including uh, this long-term video EEG monitoring, and then the patients. Uh, considered to be a candidate for a surgery uh, goes to the phase two uh, intracranial electrodes uh, when the invasive monitoring and then uh, find a focus then patients goes to the uh, phase three and the final final uh, phase the fo focus resection but the patients uh, uh, had uh, an obvious obvious uh, lesion on MRI and also the EEG findings are the same uh, of the imaging. Uh, then the patients can skip the uh, phase two and then goes to straight to uh, phase three for resection. Uh, the next one is uh, anat anatomy of the temporal lobe. <clears throat> so this is a different approach to the hippocampus. So many people know that the uh, uh, transphobian approach and the transsacral approach and transgenital approach and the subtemporal approach. But uh, I think it's a t these two, uh, uh, trans T2 uh, approach is, uh, is uh, most popular uh, around the world. And I will show you uh, my uh, surgical video about anterior medical te temporal lobectomy. Uh, this is the uh, our typical approach. And this is a coronal section of a cadaver, real cadaver. You know, we can see this uh, uh, real structure and um, making a, a surgical surgical image uh, for uh, before before the uh, real surgical procedure. And this is a hippocampus. Uh, so we should know the the uh, real anatomy: the hippocamp hippocampal head, body, and tail and the parahippocampal gyrus, and also the para, uh, collateral eminence. And then we can resect to these, uh, these regions, these regions uh, at the surgery. <clears throat> and this is a view from uh, inferior or medial uh, side of uh, te uh, right temporal lobe. And also this is very important here. Uh, number 12 is uh, called uh, entorhinal area and uh, sometimes uh, strong epileptogenicity, then uh, we should remove this uh, part uh, with the hippocampus uh, to prevent the seizure recurrence. And this is also the very important uh, uh, anatomy. And then uh, when we reject the amygdala and the hippocampus, and uh, the 
inside. So we can see many uh, arteries and veins here and also uh, midbrain. Then uh, we ship uh, these structures of subapiali. Subapiali resection is very good, very good and uh, safe. Uh, so keep subapiali resection and uh, to prevent uh, complications. And also this is, this slide shows that uh, uh, artery and the veins uh, uh, around the uh, uh, hippocampus. And then we should uh, coagulate and cut, to the, cut to these vessels along the hippocampus right here. So see this, this is a, a cadaver, but uh, uh, these uh, winding, winding arteries is very, uh, very uh, risky. Uh, so usually uh, we, co we coagulate in the uh, cut in the arteries here along the uh, hippocampus here, right? Then I will show you my surgical uh, video. So this is an anteromedial temporal lobectomy. Uh, this is a, a view from uh, textbook of surgery for epilepsy. Uh, written by S Susan and the Dennis Spencer. Uh, he is a pioneer of uh, uh, this procedure. And then uh, we, uh, we we can resect we, we resect these uh, middle temporal gyrus and the lower temporal gyrus, and then go in inside, go inside, medial structures. And a typical MRI, preoperative pre Im imaging. Uh, this is a flare image, and then we can see uh, the right hippocampal uh, atrophy, and also uh, high intensity of the right hippocampus. And then the patient underwent uh, long term video EG monitoring and then uh, demonstrated that the uh, interictal EG bilateral. But predominant on the right side here, right here, right? These are in, uh, the spikes in the discharge are, are independent, but uh, uh, more and more spikes from the right side. And this is in ictal EEG, capture the three uh, habitual seizures and show this uh, rhythmic theta, theta activity here, right here. T2 from a T2, FA, T4, and T6. These are uh, right frontal temporal region. Then uh, from this uh, MRI imaging and also this uh, EEG findings, then we, we determined that the, this patient uh, is really, uh, was really a candidate for our surgical procedure and the skip step two, uh, phase two. Uh, with uh, intracranial electrodes, and it went to the phase three directory, and uh, uh, we performed a, a typical resection. I uh, see this. This is the positioning of a uh, typical uh, uh, procedure, and uh, ten to fifteen degree head up, and uh, uh, the head uh, should turn to uh, the opposite side. Uh, and I don't like uh, too much vertex down and uh, oh, almost neutral. And the uh, skin incision is like this. Uh, small, uh, smaller incision is good for uh, only, if it is only a temple of surgery. And uh, we put the uh, uh, sponge uh, to cover the uh, hair and uh, with, with the uh, staples. And it's just the first part, uh, first part to, uh, of a uh, temple of uh, This is a middle temple uh, gyrus, uh, 35 millimeter from the tip of the temple lobe, and it go into the brain, uh, almost uh, almost a body go, uh, and it uh, go into uh, the temple temporal hole. And also remove the uh, rest of the uh, middle te middle middle temporal gyrus. And see this, we can find the uh, inferior horn here. We can see the uh, yeah, this is a uh, hippocampus. 
So almost a vertical uh, approach uh, from the middle uh, temple gyrus. So uh, we, we sometimes uh, navigation system, but uh, uh, not uh, necessary uh, uh, useful uh, for this procedure. And the second <clears throat> second stage, the rejection around the hippocampus. This is this is the hippocampus here. And also, I put a small electrode to make sure that uh, the uh, hippocampus, uh, uh, the spikes from the hippocampus. And also, rejection, rejection uh, of the uh, base of a temporal lobe, and also tip of the temporal lobe here. And it goes back to uh, the hippocampus, and a rejection should be subpiary. And it's just amygdala here, and the coagulate and the aspiration. So almost a, a half or a two thirds of a, a lower amygdala should be rejected. And then the amygdala and the hippocampus are, are, are disconnected. So this is a hippocampectomy. Uh, after the amygdala rejection, we go uh, to uh, posterior, and this is a fimbria, and the fimbria is coagulated and, uh, and aspirated. And then we can see the arteries. Uh, and this is a uh, choroidal paroxysm here. And then I cut to the uh, hippocampus here. And then uh, our coagulate and cut these vessels along the hippocampus, close to the hippocampus here. See this, this is artery. Then the hippocampus is uh, almost free from the from the uh, the surrounding uh, structures. Then removed and to, to a twenty five millimeter from the tip. So this is very important. Uh, the small vessels such as hippocampal artery from the posterior cerebral and the anterior choroidal artery should be cauterized and uh, then sharply divided only after they are well uh, within the fissure, uh, hip hippocampal fissure, right? And do not cauterize the choroidal plexus because uh, may lead to thrombosis of the anterior choroidal artery. So we do not uh, uh, retract and uh, uh, cauterize the choroidal plexus in, in uh, temporal lobe surgery. So additional section, resection. So clean up, clean up these structures and uh, put a uh, surgical. And uh, this is important and uh, retract to the brain and then we can find the uh, uh, residual hippocampus and uh, we rejected the uh, five millimeter to 10 millimeter uh, of, of the hippocampus. Then go, go uh, deeper and this is a part of hippocampal gyrus. So this is uh, uh, almost done. Uh, and uh, this is also important. Uh, uh, Residual hippocampus tail never goes to superior uh, because the tail is bordered superior by the columnar of the thalamus the internal capsule under the tail of a cortic nucleus. So this is very critical uh, and it goes, uh, ne never go, never go up uh, when, uh, when, the, uh, when we resect the, the hip, uh, residual hippocampus. 
So we can see uh, this is uh, our middle and the inferior temporal gyrus resected and also uh, amygdala, lower half amygdala resected. And the uh, hippocampus and the parahippocampal gyrus are also resected here. Another patient is a seizure, seizure free and uh, uh, her medication is now, uh, uh, I think it's of uh, 200 me 200 15 milligram, the lowest, uh, uh, smallest uh, tablet of uh, uh, Rebuchocetam. Uh, this is uh, uh, temporal, temporal of surgery, uh, the best evidence, uh, best level of evidence, class one, uh, written by Dr. Wee, a famous guy from uh, University of Calgary, and then uh, published at uh, the New England Journal of Medicine. This is a very uh, famous uh, journal. Then, uh, so please, uh, please read the uh, please uh, read this article, uh, particularly for uh, young neurosurgeons. <clears throat> and then uh, next one is the intracranial electrodes, but uh, this is kind of old fashioned. So the preparation, <clears throat> and I uh, uh, always uh, uh, put the uh, this toil with the staple to cover the hair. And the marking once again. <clears throat> and draping. Uh, wait, wait a second. <clears throat> it, it should, it should play. You can just forward a bit more, then it should play. It played just now. Yeah. It should play. Too heavy. <laughs> yeah. You can just forward a little bit, and then it should take. Oh, it's good. Yeah, so uh, uh, I always uh, obtain this uh, periosteum for uh, zero uh, uh, closure, for zero closure. It's a, uh, used as a graft. And this is a, a serious, this is a subgeral uh, sub strip for uh, temporal lobe. And I, I, I'm putting uh, electrodes under the temporal lobe uh, close to the hippocampus. And I put the one stitch uh, to prevent uh, moving. And this is a grid, grid data group, uh for uh, uh, cortical, cortical mapping and uh, 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 see the, uh, the cortical, cortical electric activity. And a closing, all oh, same thing, this is heavy. I used the grafter right here. And I always uh, uh, put these uh, electrodes under the, under the scalp here, right here.
Yeah, and this is uh, also, uh, yeah, I put the uh, uh, JP drain because uh, this is uh, so bloody. And the stitches for each electrode. And I, uh, I didn't uh, have any uh, uh, CSF leakage with this method, no infection. Okay, uh, but uh, intracranial electrodes is uh, very risky. So we see this uh, hemorrhage, hemorrhage and uh, this we see also the same thing and also kind of a contusion. And also uh, uh, the grid uh, compressed. Uh, 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 oh, <laughs> large, large brain. And then uh, to make uh, venous congestion. So now uh, a depth electrode with uh, SEG with a depth electrode is now uh, gaining a popularity. And I see this, uh, the subdural electrodes here and the abnormal findings is very high, 47.9%. And the depth electrodes are 25%. And this is a significant difference. So now the SCG is gaining popularity uh, with the robotic assistance. And then the SCG is like this. Uh, this is the previous three, many institute uh, is the frame-based, frame-based implantation. But now uh, uh, robot, uh, the neurosurgical robot radiuses operate in time. Um, this is a ROSA from uh, Zima, Zima Biomed. And the other one is uh, Neuromate from Rainy Show. Uh, there are two neurosurgical robots, but uh, very expensive. Uh, not easy to purchase it. So what is good for uh, SEG and what is good for subdural uh, electrodes? And then uh, SEG is like this, uh, bitemporal, bitemporal won't set. Uh, the insert, insert is very good for SCG and also post post the craniotomy. <clears throat> so, so many, many people with uh, prior, prior surgery, uh, severe, there's a severe adhesion between the uh, dura, dura and the brain. So the uh, SCG is good for uh, these patients. And the uh, SMA uh, supplement, supplementary motor area and also uh, uh, the uh, lesion uh, across the midline is very good for SEG. Maybe maybe these uh, seizure types are uh, going to go into SEG, I think. And uh, the other one, uh, the motor cortex or language area, the surface uh, structures are good for is uh, subdural electrode. So. Uh, Mm, I think that, that uh, great change uh, will be in, 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 in the next 10 years. <clears throat> and uh, car carosotomy. Uh, <clears throat> so this is uh, uh, the, the concept and history. Uh, carosotomy is a diminution of interhemispheric propagation of epileptic activity and uh, prevent and reduce bilateral synchrony of cortical epileptic form activity and uh, prevent uh, uh, secondary uh, generalization. So this is uh, uh, developed in, uh, this was developed in 1940, the same year, Ericsson and uh, uh, the other group, Pharma uh, uh, and uh, they observed that the patients with uh, our tumors of a corpse callosum would have a decrease in seizure frequency as the corpse, car uh, uh, corpse callosum was destroyed by the tumor. And the uh, seizures seen early in these patients were generalized, and uh, as the tumor grew, the seizures were often un unilateral and uh, without uh, uh, loss of consciousness. And this is very important, uh, interesting. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, this is uh, 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 corpse callosum. This is uh, uh, rostrum. Genu, uh, body, and the isthmus, and the uh, sprenium. 
So the surrounding, uh, surrounded by the important uh, artery and the veins here, and uh, very deep. Uh, this is uh, my surgical surgical video of a co coax carotidotomy, uh, one stage total carotidotomy sectioning uh, for patients with uh, Lennox Gastaut syndrome. Uh, the patient uh, often fall, falls and uh, uh, very dangerous uh, for uh, because uh, uh, he had many head injuries. Now, see this. This is uh, uh, callosum here, uh, white one, callosum and. Uh, Uh, we should find uh, the midline septum. So this this is a septum, and uh, we can we can go anteriorly uh, along the septum, and this is uh, uh, almost the rostrum and the uh, genu. Yes, this is the rostrum. And uh, we can see uh, anterior, anterior, anterior cerebral artery under, under this. See this is splitting the corpus callosum here. And also uh, this is a digital part of the genome. And we can uh, cut this. So the anterior part is uh, completely rejected. Uh, and then uh, uh, we go back to the posterior part of the uh, carosum. So this is a posterior part of the carosum. This is like, uh, like a tube, like a tube. Then uh, uh, removing the, removing the, uh, the, the tube, like, like uh, removing the tube. So go go into uh, splay splaining. This is closing. Now the, the end of the end of the uh, callosum here. So this is sometimes this is bloody, and then uh, take care when when you when you the final final section, and the part of uh, probably the part of the vein of the gallium. <clears throat> And this is uh, uh, the surgery uh, carotidotomy is completed. Uh, so this is uh, uh, yeah, we should uh, take a look at uh, a couple of uh, results from uh, a major uh, uh, university and institute. Uh, this is uh, from Yale. Uh, the seizure outcome, uh, seizure outcome class is one to three. But the one two is good. Uh, the three is uh, bad. There's no change. And then see this partial section. Partial section means that uh, uh, a half of uh, anterior part or anterior two thirds of a callosum uh, was section. Then uh, see this uh, sixty five percent had no change. And then they uh, had additional uh, sectioning uh, for complete complete sectioning. And also the total sectioning here, right here, and then uh, see this did the better better outcome uh, in, ter in terms of the seizure control. <clears throat> and uh, uh, this is uh, from Montreal, and the seizure type is here, tonic-clonic seizure, and the drop attacks, and the atypical absence seizures. Then the tonic-clonic seizures, the drop attacks are, as a good outcome. Yeah, right, 77, more than 77%. Uh, but the atypical absence is not good, 56. Uh, and uh, uh, take care. Uh, when, when, you, when you use the uh, drop attacks as a semiology, this is not a tip, uh, uh, 
this is not a, a type of semiology. This is a, just a phenomenon. So we can we cannot uh, use the drop attacks uh, in, in uh, when we prescribe uh, when we describe the uh, seizure semi semiology. Drop attacks is a, just a phenomenon, not the seizure type. So this this is complicated, but uh, uh, just. Uh, 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 when you when you uh, presented a, uh, some kind of uh, uh, epilepsy presentation, uh, so just just take care. Uh, uh, epileptologist will uh, tell you something <laughs> when, when you use it or part text as a semiology. <clears throat> The last one, uh, Vegas nerve stimulation. So the, this is anatomy. This is anatomy of the Vegas nerve, and uh, we uh, we normally we normally put the device on the left side uh, because uh, uh, the right side, see here, right right side, uh, innervate right side of the Vegas nerve innervate the zero atrium of the or atrium, then. Uh, so uh, may have stimulation of the right right vagus nerve may have uh, bradycardia, but it's not really <laughs> that's complicated. Normally uh, we put the left side, and then eighty percent of uh, vagus nerve uh, conveys afferent sensory information to the brain. So it, it's it's uh, reasonable to. Uh, select the left side uh, of the vagus nerve, and the, the mechanism. Uh, we always discuss this <coughs> uh, issue, but uh, there's no uh, conclusion. I'm still unclear. <coughs> but this is uh, uh, one of, one of the our hypotheses. So the vagus nerve uh, goes to the nucleus tractus cervicalis. And then uh, these uh, uh, other uh, nucleus, and then this this local local cells, local cells, and those are love nucleus is very important to uh, keep the vagus nerve stimulation. Uh, one researcher uh, destroyed uh, uh, the local cells uh, in the in the uh, animal, and but but uh, the vagus nerve uh, VNS. Uh, did not work anymore after the destruction of local cells. The local cells is a very important part of the venous system. <clears throat> uh, but uh, uh, still, uh, still, uh, there's no uh, definite and then uh, mechanism action. Unclear, still unclear. So the in, what is the indications for VNS? This is a different from uh, cranial, cranial surgery and uh, a medical refractory epilepsy. But if a patient could could have benefits uh, like seizure freedom uh, from uh, intracranial epilepsy surgery, then go go to go to the cranial craniotomy first. Uh, no question. And if a patient was a bilateral bilateral independent foci in a diffuse diffuse regions. Or unresectable foci, uh, venous should be considered first. Uh, but uh, venous is very uh, expensive. Uh, in, in, in my country, uh, the government pays for uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the device, uh, and then we can. Patients can get uh, reimbursement uh, of, of this uh, procedure, but uh, uh, I think it, uh, that some country uh, uh, didn't uh, did, patients doesn't get the uh, reimbursement, and this is uh, this is a problem. And this uh, uh, proce procedure and uh, treatment is very. Uh, very good for patients uh, uh, who are not a good candidate for uh, intracranial epilepsy surgery. Uh, <clears throat> see this. This is uh, <clears throat> so the right hemisphere has gone. 
so this this uh, young lady young lady uh, get a, a severe hip injury when she was one or two years old uh, and uh, uh, severe uh, made a severe uh, cerebral contusion uh, and then she soon had the uh, in intractable stages epilepsy and then uh, came uh, referred to me but uh, uh, there's no uh, seizure uh, EEG activity on the right side, and uh, there there was uh, many uh, there there are many uh, uh, spike activity on the left side, multiple uh, multiple four side. Then uh, I I don't think she's a candidate for in intracranial epilepsy surgery. Uh, then I put the uh, BNS BNS uh, uh, system, and it it worked. And uh, she's very good now, and uh, uh, more than uh, 50 to 70 percent of uh, total seizure uh, events uh, were reduced. Uh, and then uh, she, unfortunately, she didn't have language, but uh, uh, she now can understand some uh, words. No response, but uh, she she can she can understand. <clears throat> And then next one is eight year old boy uh, who uh, is also uh, a severe uh, uh, intractable epilepsy. And uh, at the age of three, she uh, he walked around uh, with the long chopsticks at, uh, the, for bar barbecue, and uh, she uh, he fell down to the ground, and the chopsticks uh, penetrated his left orbit, and then uh, go through uh, went through the right frontal lobe. Uh, and then the uh, CAT scan demonstrated the large intracerebral hem hemorrhage on the right side of the brain and uh, uh, evacuation was done at uh, the local hospital. But uh, the uh, epilepsy uh, developed and uh, became very severe. Uh, the semiology is like this, uh, uh, that was a spas spasms uh, followed by a tonic phase and tonic seizures for more than 10 seconds. Then uh, patient, uh, patients, uh, Fail uh, many times and very dangerous, and then she lost uh, uh, <clears throat> many deaths. Then uh, <clears throat> uh, I put the uh, I think a, I think that the colostomy is the first uh, option, and then take uh, took the MRI. But uh, you will see, uh, no corpse carlson. So I think this is uh, uh, atrophy. Uh, from the uh, contusion of the frontal lobe, then uh, uh, he is not uh, he is not a candidate for uh, carotomy. Then uh, I put the, the BNS system, and then uh, I'll show you. This is a very good uh, example of uh, uh, improvement in EEG findings. And before this is before BNS uh, therapy, and you see uh, the synchronous bilateral spike and the wave, and then. Uh, this is uh, uh, seems to be very bad uh, situation uh, of these patients. And after venous treat, uh, venous implantation, and six months later, uh, see this uh, the, the synchronization is a split. It, the v v venous uh, uh, is cons uh, is uh, uh, probably uh, split to the synchron synchronized activity of the brain. Then uh, we will see the background activity right here, uh, but the spikes is still on the right side, but the uh, basic ground activity is, uh, came back. Then uh, he is very nice, very good condition, and uh, he, speaks, he speaks well. And, uh, uh, now, uh, there's probably uh, almost, almost, almost a seizure free. Uh, so this is uh, the final video uh, of uh, venous implantation. <clears throat> and I put a uh, uh, 12, a uh, roll of a 12 uh, under, the, under the spine uh, to extension, uh, for extension of the neck. And this is uh, uh, the, the midline and uh, the, this is the uh, anterior edge of a uh, sternocleidal mastoid ma muscle. And uh, this is a skin incision and also this is the incision for generator <clears throat> placement.
Uh, we can uh, perform this procedure with the surgical loop, but uh, I, I think a uh, microscope is better to control uh, uh, small vessels, uh, the bleeding. See this three a finger bread uh, incision and the cut the uh, platysma. And uh, we should find the uh, anterior edge of a stenocardial muscle, muscle. <clears> of <throat> the muscle. See this, this is, uh, this is edge. <clears throat> The assistant, uh, assistant surgeon uh, retract to the other side, and then I retract to my side with the left hand and uh, uh, use the uh, uh, uh for blunt uh, dissection. And it's just a muscle, uh, still not got a muscle. Then there's some. Uh, Probably we can see the biggest level right here. Yeah, the blood, uh, blood dissection is very good uh, to prevent the bleeding. Um, see, this, this is the biggest, big, uh, this is the biggest nerve here. And I always, uh, 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 Put some uh, uh, counted sheath, sheath uh, to to the uh, bigger stuff uh, because uh, there's uh, many uh, uh, vessels like vaso 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 inside of the cheese. Then uh, see, see this. <coughs> So the blunt dissection uh, doesn't give it, give us uh, uh, bleeding, and I put the uh, one surgical tape here, and then uh, put the electrode under the, under the vagus under the vagus nerve here. Okay, uh, yeah, and there's a, a placement of electrodes is down. And uh, uh, put the tethering uh, along the uh, uh, fascia of the muscles. And also uh, the, uh, this is, uh, uh, this is a uh, very skinny board. Then uh, I put the generator between the uh, subpectoral approach, uh, major pectoral muscle and the uh, uh, minor uh, pectoral muscles. And the subcarticular stitches and then uh, put the dharma bone and then also uh, the other uh, tapes on, the, on that. So this is the uh, outcome of uh, uh, first three years of uh, post uh, prospective Japanese uh, registry. Uh, I think uh, th uh, almost 300 uh, patients uh, uh, joined the research and uh, uh, Professor Kawai uh, wrote, this, uh, wrote this article. And see this, this is a, uh, 50, the line is a 50% uh, Responder, more than 50% res uh, responder, uh, or 60% of patients got uh, more than 15% seizure reduction. Then this is uh, a little bit uh, better uh, results compared to the previous uh, articles world worldwide, uh, because uh, uh, more more stimulation and. More stimulation gives us more seizure redu reduction, and uh, uh, probably the uh, the patients uh, are 
in a, in, in, in our country, uh, access is, uh, is, is good uh, for patients. Then uh, uh, sometimes every month, every month patients go to the clinic and then, uh, and then uh, increase in the uh, parameters uh, to, re to reduce the seizure frequency. <clears throat> So the take take home uh, basic concepts and techniques in FMC surgery were presented, uh, and the temple lobe surgery is the first hurdle for young FMC surgeons. Uh, and the several jury electrodes will be replaced gradually uh, by SAG uh, in, in in Japan. It is it is not uh, not uh, before the beginning <laughs> uh, with the depth electrode. Uh, VNS is the only implantable device uh, worldwide at the present. But uh, uh, DVS, DVS is, uh, uh, is originally Parkinson's disease, but uh, uh, now uh, in the United States, uh, DVS is approved for uh, epilepsy. And also RNS system, responsive neurostimulation is a new device, is, is still in the United States. Uh, and then but uh, we'll be introduced in the near future, I think. That's it. Thank you very much for, uh, oh yeah, Mr. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much, Professor Yamamoto. That was an excellent presentation. You took us through the technical nuances of this delicate surgeries. Thank you very much for presenting such a exciting topic now may i please declare the platform open professor mathuria is here professor mathuria would you like to say something i'm here only and yeah, uh, uh, say i heard so many epilepsy talks and it had been quite basic and the techniques and the pre-op evaluation everything had been so nice and he has covered the vagal nerve stimulation also very nicely plus uh -huh. the technique and mm -hmm. uh, so it was an excellent presentation and educative, not only to the beginners, but to the people like me as well. So it's nice. Thank you. Yeah, there is a question which has popped. What will be the effect of contralateral side vagus nerve stimulation electrode placement? I think Dr. Prakash has asked that. I think he might have meant uh, on the right side. It, normally, we don't use uh, right side of the vagus nerve because uh, uh, you know uh, the possibility is uh, uh, bradycardia. But uh, uh, one article demonstrated that uh, uh, they implanted uh, uh, the right side of, right side of the vagus nerve because. Uh, previously, the patient got the infection on the left side. Oh, yeah. So what That's... happened? Nothing happened on the right side. So, uh, oh. but, but just one case. One case so no, no, nobody knows, knows for sure, but uh, uh, this is probably uh, we, can, we can put. Uh, normally, uh, uh, the stimulation, go, stimulation normally goes up to, to the brain, not 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 down. Uh, how Baker's nerve works for epilepsy, unclear. <laughs> um, yeah, but uh, there's uh, many researchers uh, uh, did so, uh, many many uh, uh, research and investigations. But uh, uh, some some researchers uh, said that the, the uh, thalamus uh, thalamus is, is the most important part to. Uh, uh, sub to suppress to suppress the seizures uh, with the vagus nerve stimulation, but the someone is local cellulose, <laughs> and uh, uh, still 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 unknown. But uh, the structures uh, structures from the vagus nerve to through nu nu uh, uh, nucleus structures solitarius and uh, uh, yeah, thalamus and then uh, cortex is uh, is obvious. Uh, but uh, um, nobody can explain to us uh, difficult, uh, the definite uh, uh, mechanisms. There is another question from uh, Dr. Sneha Chitra, who has asked, what were the complications, if any, in your series of vagus nerve stimulation? Uh, in terms of the surgical te uh, technique, uh, we performed them more than... Uh, I think at the 300 cases of a venous, but uh, uh, 10 to 20 cases had some uh, complications, uh, with the, including uh, 
surgical surgical side infection there is another question from swatantra mishra who have asked do you have any exposure to laser interstitial thermal therapy and what is the future hold for this therapy oh no yeah laser no. litt right litt laser interstitial thermal therapy it's not uh, available in my country no uh, yeah. experience but uh, i think it's a, it's a good for uh, temporal lobe epilepsy i talked to with a uh, uh, ep- epileptologist from uh, uh, emory emory clinic and she said that uh, uh, they 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 performed litt first for temporal lobe epilepsy and then uh, maybe maybe five or six uh, cases uh, uh, good, had a good outcome, but uh, the rest of them, uh, three or four cases, uh, had, still had the seizures. Then uh, goes to uh, resection. There is one more question. Dr. Rizu Dahal, are you here? You may ask your question. Sure. They, they, these patients, uh, if these patients had, have uh, uh, drop attacks, so the counsel me first. My experience, drop attack uh, will be will be controlled with a calcotomy. Patients still have some kind of uh, seizures, like a, like a brief tonic seizures or something, atypical abscess or something. Patients uh, really need some more uh, treatment. Then uh, put the VNS. There is another question: Which brain target is used for DVS for epilepsy? Antinucleus. And antinucleus of the thalamus. I would like to ask, Professor, you have left out a hemispherectomy in this uh, surgical armamentarium. The indications for hemispherectomy and what is your experience in this regard? In- indications is a, uh, is a very limited, uh, particularly for uh, small children, my baby, more, almost a baby, for uh, with uh, with uh, hemimegalencephaly and. Uh, uh, some uh, uh, large uh, le- lesions, lesions obvious on the MRI in the, just uh, one side. That is uh, uh, indications for hemisphere ultimate. So I think uh, we'll wind up this session. Uh, on behalf of the Education Committee of ACNS and the President, Professor Yoko Gato, I sincerely thank you for coming here and educating us regarding the technical nuances of the epilepsy surgery. And we hope you continue your support in the future editions of ACNS webinars as well. Thank you very much, Sensei.